Someone's wearing their party shirt. Hola. <laughs> Como estas? <laughs> Estoy bien. <laughs> I well, took two semesters of Spanish. Did you? Yeah. A little cultural appropriation for you. You had to do a second language in arts degree. I'm talking about that shirt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's tacos and a donkey. So what are we doing today? <laughs> Uh, we're celebrating my favorite time and one of my favorite times of the year. It's uh, May the 4th and Cinco de Mayo, but it's actually May the 2nd, but yeah, it's a weekend. <laughs> we're brewing a beer. Right. Uh, a jalapeno <laughs> saison, which we're spicing up with some pepper, coriander, and a lemon peel. Yeah, this one's going to be cool, I think. So what do you want to talkie talkie about? <laughs> Yeast. Yeast pie. Yeast pie. So this is our yeast that we have uh, for our brew. It's three different types because we didn't have enough Saison yeast. So I used a mixture between Saison, wheat, and a dry ale. Hopefully that creates some cool flavors. So what do you anticipate happening to that? Uh, the Saison makes it like peppery and bright and really bubbly. Uh, the wheat will play really nice with uh, the coriander that we have and the dry ale is just like a solid, good, like, base yeast. Okay, so it shouldn't, like, mess up the beer, should it? Okay, that's cool. And there are yeasts in my sourdough starter! Yay! <laughs> I made sourdough once, <laughs> and now I love my sourdough starter. So you can see in there, it's all bubbly. It kind of looks like paint. Kind of. Or like paper mache. I don't use the fancy, um, the fancy flowers that other people do because I'm poor. <laughs> um, so I just use all-purpose flour. And my friend gave me some of their starter, and now I have my own starter that I can use and feed and use it whenever I'm making. It. So would right. you call that a continuer? Yeah. <laughs> it's not much of a starter. <laughs> but yeah, similar, like things going on here. The yeast heats up the sugars that you add to it in both, and um, they're all active and alive. So they feed off sugar, create this ferment, fermenty flavor. This creates alcohol, as we know, and this creates like a sour lactobacillus. There's two different types of uh, strains of bacteria that's growing in here. So that's really cool. So. Well, I did not know we were getting a science, uh, you know. science YouTube corner here. Aaron's feeding his starter and we have some beef and beans and chipotle salsa in the slow cooker which you'll see later. So but we're a little hungry so we're finishing off a batch of beer bread that I made with our spent grains um, and we are going to open this uh, Okay, Anda, tequila barrel aged sour goza, which we got from Big Spruce Brewing. So let's pour it up. We got our Corona uh, bottle of hey, hey. uh, which Corona was actually the first beer I ever drank. And now I don't really like it as much as I used to. <laughs> I thought you were really into Mexican lagers. Uh, I am. <laughs> and artisanal stouts. Yes, artisan Ar stouts. Artisan <laughs> Oops. Um, Yum, that looks so yeah, good. So we got some, uh, we do have a Mexican lager coming up after this one. We do. <laughs> We've had this, uh, this guy before. That looks so good. I think we tried it um, in a flight at Battery Park, didn't we? In, the, um, mm -hmm. in Dartmouth when we were there last year. And Sonia and Alicia had some at our Christmas party. You really get the tequila on the nose. Tequila, tequila. <clears throat> we have six bottles of this. I feel like this should be a uh, celebration beer that we don't down <laughs> all the way very quickly. Bright and effervescent with lush notes of fresh melon and white peach. This is the wave you didn't want to miss. Dry, crisp, and finishes with a bite from the long tequila barrel aging. Now, I did not learn that word in uh, the two semesters of Spanish I did because I don't know it. <laughs> yeah, let me know what you think. Ooh, 
It's like a uh, Mexican restaurant. What? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. Ooh, caliente, <laughs> picante. So Chris had this really great idea to soak the jalapeno in tequila, which I thought was genius because I was like, how are we going to sanitize it? But the tequila will kill all the bacteria. And aye, then we aye, put aye. it in the boil anyway. So that is what we're doing, which is crazy. There's coriander and pepper in the bottom of this too. So I think it's going to be like super spicy. And we're going to add some lemon uh, peel in there. So yeah. it would be like uh, taking a body shot in, in your Saison. And we got our tea strainer thing too. So. Yes, yeah, smart. Which mm -hmm. we've only... So... Mr. Patey's wearing his usual brew hat mm -hmm. um, and a Cinco de Trinco. <laughs> I don't remember what shirt is in Spanish. Oh well. Uh, it's from American Eagle okay. from a few years ago. Una cerveza, por favor, senor. Wow. Those two courses in one are really coming through. Right? What's this? This is Granville Island. Island Cerveza. Uh, it's a limited edition, and it says born from a small batch, exceptionally crisp, smooth lager, inspired by the classic Cuban Cerveza. Yeah. Um, so my mom talks a lot about the Cuban beer. Um, I think she got me one once and wasn't really fond of it, but that was before I was like, you know, super into beer. Um, but for the, that. This Mexican lager, well, I guess Cuban lager, I suppose, is, uh, we had this last week, or the week before, time has no meaning anymore. It was quite tasty. You can really taste, uh, I think, doesn't mention it on here, but maybe, I don't know. Anyway, you can taste like the sugar cane, uh, which is quite famous in Cuba. Uh, we, we do like a Mexican lager, even though we make fun of, uh, that, that that was a whole other side <laughs> we story. Do really like it. Um, they're just not very prevalent around here, which is yeah. why we sort of joke about it because we ran into somebody who said they were really into Mexican lagers lately, which was kind of like one. <laughs> what? Uh, but since then, remember Mill Street did theirs, yeah. uh, Cerveza, and that was really tasty. Well. You could taste the agave on that. Yeah. And um, Good Robots jalapeno, uh, jalapeno Lager. That kind of inspired like, doing this one. Yeah, for sure. I uh, yeah. really love that one. Yeah. Um, and even um, our good friends at Bootleg did mm -hmm. their uh, chili lime pale ale, I think it, yeah, was. it was. I really like that one. I was really wanting to try. They have one called Cinco de Cuatro last year, <laughs> which is a rest of development um, reference. I think that was like a Order or a stout, like a spicy stout or something. Give us the flavor mm. notes. Oh, uh, well, I'm not good at that, but it's super easy to drink. Um, it's got the little sweetness on the end. You can probably speak to that a lot better. Yeah. This comes in the, their new summer mix pack. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Granville, which GIB, I remember I was like, what the hell is a gin? But Granville <laughs> Island Brewery. Um, the first summer pack is probably still my favorite one. That had the summer lager and the Hefeweizen. What else was it? Oh, the raspberry. I think that was a raspberry lager too, wasn't it? Wait. Was it a wheat? And what's the fourth one? Maybe an IPA that I wasn't super fond of them, but probably would like it now. If it's the West Coast one that they do. Um, and one time we bought a summer pack. Do you remember that? All that time ago when we were first together. <laughs> uh, and they didn't have any Hefeweizen in there. No. So I contacted them and they sent me a whole dozen Hefeweizen. It and it was lovely. so good. So we're big fans. Mm -hmm. Here we go. How do we feel? I don't know. I'm excited. Oh. Excited's good. Yeah. Looks a little funky in there. It's kind of dark. What would you attribute that to? I don't know. Caramel malt? Because we could put that in there, didn't we? 
possibly. That's our piece of lemon. So the uh, jalapeno is out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I'm excited for that part. Yes. That should be fun, hopefully. And you pickled some carrots along the way. I did, yeah. We're just fun pickling. being little, what would the word be? Domestic. I don't know. Foragers. There you go. <laughs> little Stump Jumper Brewing is in Markland, which is Newfoundland's <laughs> first inland farming community. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And when home brewing gives you a bad batch of beer, you make beer margaritas. So <laughs> unfortunately, we are Citrus Goza, which we will be posting a video to probably today or tomorrow. Didn't turn out. Um, I think in the video- It didn't sour. Yeah. And I think in the video, uh, it fizzes up a lot. Well, not in the video, but it fizzes up a lot. <laughs> um, and I think in the video that you're going to see, it's because I screwed up the citrus yeah. fruits. Uh, by so what are we doing here? Heating the oven. So we tried this. <laughs> that sounded really like shady. Like <laughs> we tried this last Sunday, and uh, you said you hated it, but oh, I was disappointed. And you added some. What'd you do? Lime juice or lemon yeah. to it? And it was a little bit better. It didn't sour. And so we're going to, I automatically thought this would make a great beer margarita. So that's what we're going to do with it. Uh, no love lost here. So we're going to do a, well, we've already used a little, the remaining tequila that was left in our, that was soaking jalapeno. in our jalapeno. So use a little bit less of that. <laughs> we're still going to go with Oh that my now. God. Uh, so we've got a half cup of tequila plus another little bit. And we're gonna go with a half a cup. It says limeade, but man, ordering groceries online, not the easiest thing in the world. So we're gonna use a half a cup of margarita. Mm -hmm. We might throw a little bit more of that in. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna throw in the goza. So it came out, it, it came out citrusy and very salty. Uh, oh, okay, this one is not fizzing, but we put it in the fridge, remember? So. Yeah. Maybe. We've been experimenting, like, well, we read online, basically, that you need to put it in the fridge for a week before it gets good. Don't pour in the bottoms of it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! It's pouring really nicely. Yeah, it's, it's a real shame that it didn't sour properly. Yeah. Mmm. Go and I guess we'll just toss in a little bit more of this stuff. So we've got some nachos in the oven. Mm. I think I think this will be good. This is a my Tiffany's jar jug. Totally use it a lot. <laughs> some fancy like that. Looks great. And uh, finish off the OOTB. We're wearing our we me. I'm not them. Uh, I'm wearing a hat from Wild Rose Brewery in Alberta. Um, my cousin brought us some beers last summer and they were good. The Wild Rose, I think we had, it was called Velvet Wheat, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds like a gay club here. But um, we had to look up to make sure that Wild Rose, because I remember the Wild Rose uh, party, which is like ultra conservative in Alberta. We had to look those up to make sure that they weren't uh, a crazy brewery so that we can support them, uh, you know. And since it's Cinco de Mayo, I just want to come out and say that I'm against the wall. Uh, and, oh, okay, we're done. You know? <laughs> the brew's done, and we have some nachos to celebrate. And how is, how's the beer, Mark? That uh, beer was really salty. Yeah, so definitely didn't add any salt to these marks. Mm -mm. So we're gonna go gorge on these. We even sprung for fancy sour cream. Sour cream. So 